Hello and welcome to Browse here on Cafero.tv, the show where we unveil what's happening in the technology industry. Today I have a fantastic guest all the way from Europe and he's here to share his ideas on what ICT is today. Michael, yes. welcome. Thank you, Angela. That is Michael Chiviruna Genda, who's here to well inspire us into why we should get into the ICT industry, mm -hmm. especially since our nation is so young. So, Michael. Yes, please. To cut the long story short, mm. at one point, basically, we had ICT as a subject that you could opt to do. But today, it just seems like uh, ICT is intertwined in everything we do. Yes. How important do you think it is that everyone should have some ICT skilling? Wow, good question. Thanks, first of all, for having me. Um, I mean, we like to carry our mobile phones around everywhere we go. It is IT, mm -hmm. basically. And some people even look at the new phone they want to have. And it's not just it looks nice, but usually function even uh, advanced in some way. So I think without ICTs, basically, it's if, I don't know, some people drink like African tea without milk. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't work because it's just so, as you said, intertwined mm -hmm. in our lives already. So it is very important. Okay. Um, when you talk about it being very important, ICT is quite wide. Uh, would you be able to tell us the direction someone can take? Because um, mm. when it's being presented, it's usually, or do ICT, but we know we have areas like networking, mm. databases, programming. Which field do you think today is one of the top tier that people should concentrate on? Wow. It, it really comes with the gift one has mm -hmm. because th there are certain things you really need deep up understanding of certain concepts. Mm -hmm. And um, someone might have uh, a very strong visual strengths mm -hmm. or gift mm -hmm. in that area. So he might go in something he, which is more visual. That could be either graphic design, that can be user interface design, that could be maybe even just media, right. etc. Someone else just loves to crack the numbers, mm -hmm. basically. That could be now a, a developer, for example, uh, in, in developing. And Java, for example, I would say today is like one of the numbers. There is like an index every year that shows which programming language is actually the strongest that people really ask for, experts mm -hmm. in that area. So usually it's Java, Python is quite strong. It's also my favorite mm -hmm. in that area. Then you have Swift, which is now going a bit down from the upper side, etc. So, but I would still say, I mean, we still have databases to right. mention. We have Oracle, MySQL. Um, I will always think that we need to look at what is most accessible. Mm -hmm. And the accessible things is usually open source stuff where you can basically get the things dirty fast. Right. So you look at different domains, I said. And the ones that where is your gift? What do you like? Mm. Because the facets are so big right. that you can really say, okay, I'm going into database, mm. I'm going to the operating system, I'm going to de development, etc. And then even that has, again, other levels. Mm -hmm. So it's really, uh, what is your first love, yeah. basically? And that you just dig deeper into it. There's no like one answer to it all. Right. Every one of, of us is different. Okay. Mm. So uh, according to your, should I call it a resume, you're skilled in quite various areas, whether it be cybersecurity, whether it be big data, whether it be cloud. Do you think ICT is, a, is an industry that can be penetrated by women? Because there's that stereotype that it's, well, it's an area for men. Mm. What do you think the role of women in the ICT industry should be? Should they, should they pay attention? Is it something that they should really not be concerned with? Mm. What, what's your take? Well, from your field of work, what's your take when it comes to women in ICT? Mm. I think some areas we overrate. Mm -hmm. Some areas. I work in an organization, they have about 2,000 people sitting there mm -hmm. in IT area. And usually it's the biggest budget spent on. In my department, do I have a lady there? In my very, there's no lady wow. like that. Um, I'm not saying it's good. Mm. I'm not saying it's bad, but 
again it's the interest side uh, for the women i think looking at the advantage of the woman has in the way she takes things and etc mm -hmm. i think for sure women should definitely be involved yes. in that area and again as i mentioned it is really according to the gift mm. and uh, we, we have great women who are outside there in the it and doing great things um, so maybe in some areas more rare, yeah. but in other ones it's quite big. You find designers, sometimes you think like, yeah, it's just a web designer. Right. But no, they do the web design how it looks like, then they go to CSS, cascading style sheet, then they do HTML, mm -hmm. and you find at the end they, ha they have actually delivered a whole product mm -hmm. like that. So I think for both sides, male or female, mm -hmm. the, 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 the plate is so big, mm -hmm. there's no fear to share. Uh, and the more are coming on the table to eat from it, the better. I think the reason why I brought up the women in ICT is um, before, or should I say previously, mm. uh, we had jobs which were cut out for women. Mm. You know, whether it's social services, nurses, those were ideally ladies' jobs. Mm -hmm. But now with the introduction of Internet of Things, digitization, don't you feel that ladies will be left behind, especially in the areas of programming? Mm. Because if you're looking at things like artificial intelligence, mm. like technologies that are coming up, whether it's drones or mm. anything like that, that's affecting our everyday life. We feel, I personally look at it like if the ladies don't start paying attention now, <laughs> might there not be a problem where everyone is required maybe to have some skills in a programming language and uh, they haven't been paying attention. Mm, Do you mm. think that we should cause or bring out some awareness mm. to say that, yes, we understand currently there are very few men in the, I mean, mm. few women in the field, mm. but to encourage women mm. because where we're going, eventually you got, I mean, even just to log on to Facebook, mm. it still takes some amount of skill <laughs> really okay yes <laughs> we, we we do training and, and someone's like you know i don't understand i don't care for facebook mm. but yet at some point it's more like a tsunami where this ict is mm, coming mm, for mm. us I, I, how I, would you how would a woman get into the ict what's the easiest way mm, if there is a way mm. yeah I, I mean yes it's definitely a big pool mm and uh, both sides, male or female, definitely should, should jump in mm. and because it's, as I said, big enough for sharing. Mm. And uh, it, it's not, I mean, for some time it was a domain of men mm. for different reasons, but it used to be a computer was a huge hole, basically, and the hole was the computer, more or less, mm. so it was even a heavy job. But still women even then played a, a very important role. And I think, yes, it definitely makes sense that they come into it. And it's important also that, um, let me say, organizations that do training, mm. that they include both genders yes. where possible. And, uh, but you see, it's not something where you open the door and say, now women come and then mm. they all storm in. Right. It's also for them to open and press the handle mm. down to also enter. So it's a, it's a two, two way uh, that is here. So, um, yeah, so basically, yes, they should be encouraged. Mm -hmm. um, there's no fear. There's nothing man can do on IT a woman cannot do. It is just that uh, the question is the sacrificing mm -hmm. for it and so on and so forth. So, like, my wife, when I come home, she, she will not ask, hey, darling, how are you? And shop, she's on my computer. Mm -hmm. But for me, I'm like, oh, I need to check this. I need yeah. to, both have different values somehow. But I've also seen corporate ladies, they're like, mm -hmm. hey, you know what, I'm, I have to do A, B, C, D, E. So it really, it really depends. Mm -hmm. And also where you are. Here in Kampala, things might look different, but mm -hmm. go to Masaka or deeper where the, the interest definitely there is, is, is something else. Yes. Um, we have quite a few people who are interested in programming. Mm -hmm. As you know, uh, app, app development is the thing today. Everyone's building an app. But the question I usually get is when someone wants to study a programming language, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what's the way to go? Because you have someone say C sharp, go with C sharp. Mm -hmm. Someone saying Java. Then mm -hmm. you have the new Python. Yes. What are the differences or what are the benefits of each? Are you mm. able to because it's one thing to say, oh, I'm going to learn c mm. and then it, uh, you know, you need a .NET, uh, you know, to, to make mm. it work. Mm. And, and mm. if in terms of 
something which is really easy to deal with mm. in terms of programming? Mm. What's the way to do? Wow, um, programming language is, is like, uh, it's vast. Mm. There are many outside there and every other month or what you hear there's a new one. And uh, when I started I had to do C, mm. which is deep, deep down there. Mm. And then I had to go to C++ and then I did Java. Uh, then I did C Sharp mm. and uh, I did Python. Mm. So um, the issue, usually people don't actually know what the programming language is mm. because they will tell you HTML is a program, programming language, mm. which is not. Mm. Or JavaScript is a programming language, which I would say more is scripting or batch, etc. So um, the way forward is, again, every uh, challenge has special tools mm. to solve it mm. best. Mm. Now, if I have a sword and I need to dig a hole, uh, it might not be the best tool mm. to do it. And I may take a hole which might do a better job in that area. Mm. Uh, if I don't have the hole, I might use still the sword and it, the job will still be done somehow. Mm. So it depends on my skills how to use the sword mm. to dig the hole. Because if I don't know how the whole works and I just beat myself on my feet with it, mm. it is also not really helping me to do the job. Mm. It could, but I don't have the skills. And so it's also with programming languages. Someone might know how to use C++ very well. Right. Uh, for the job, I would say no, Python would do better, but he is not trained or doesn't have that knowledge mm. in that area. If you're a beginner today, I would definitely say start with, uh, start with um, Python. Uh, Python works almost on all gadgets. It uh, has very strong operators when you work with strings, mm. strings basically when you work with text yes. and do certain things. And uh, it's, 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 it's uh, very clean code when you write. It's very easy readable. Mm -hmm. Java is object oriented. It has definitely its beauty mm -hmm. and runs so many things though usually when you talk to experts or so, they will always tell you Java, forget, always mm -hmm. RAM and drama mm -hmm. and what. But if you get now a good coder in Java who's really good, he's going to show you a software that runs actually faster than anything mm -hmm. else, kind of. So again, that's where the skill level comes in. But as I said, as a beginner, today if you think about starting programming what, go with Python. It has uh, a good... F I I and say look at the feedback loop mm -hmm. how fast does it give you a feedback mm -hmm. and the faster you get the feedback usually the better whatever you do is if mm -hmm. it's a programming language the better if you're to build a house and you just put a brick in and you see how the whole house will look like mm -hmm. then you put another brick and those bricks are brown mm -hmm. and it does like that but then there's uh, those bricks yellow you put one you put two you put hundreds and then slowly you mm -hmm. see what unfolds i'll tell you use that brick where you put one and you see imagine the picture and that's what i mean with feedback loop that's where python is is, is quite strong and quite good if you work on linux machines mm -hmm. where you need to do scripting right. and you're limited now to Perl because the company does Perl. Yeah. you don't come and say hey but i did python i know da 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 now it has to be this i'll tell you thank you bye finish there so for me, when I enter corporates and tell me, you know what, we use Windows and we use MS SQL database. Right. I don't start to discuss. I put my head into learning. I learn about it. I push it. The time the time comes, we say, ah, there are issues. Maybe we may migrate. I say, mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, uh, Oracle and, and what? But because I'm an Oracle trained person, right. I, didn't, I don't like the other. Mm -hmm. Someone else may say, no, 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 that's the best. So there's always this liking, the skill, and that mix basically. Great, thank you for uh, demystifying that area for sure. me because I wasn't sure. But right now uh, we're going to go for just a break and we'll see you. This is Browse, catch you back in five. As we've all seen, the world is running so fast. But there's still those that are running too slow. With these fast-changing trends, how can you position yourself to be relevant in ever fast-changing world? You know how? Café. It's for that reason that Café Foundation was created, offering relevance to you through 
digital skill trainings, incubation of ideas, and funding of projects. Cafero Foundation has a vision of inspiring individuals, communities, to grow through innovation. So join us today to transform Africa. Cafero Foundation, inspiring innovation. programming <laughs> 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 But HTML is quite powerful. Yeah. It is. I mean, with HTML how? and CSS. Electron? Just the electron. electron. Yeah, I've yeah. heard of. I've like not worked with it. Uh huh. It's like a desktop. Uh huh. And the interface is HTML. Okay, but, but it's like a desktop. App. Yes, but so it was only developed <laughs> with <laughs> HTML <laughs> and CSS. Only that. I said the front is like the layout. Actually, there is not just on the back end. And. Welcome back to Browse. My name is Angela. Welcome back to Kafaro TV. And we are in the middle of a discussion, a heated discussion, based on programming languages. Is HTML a programming language or not? So mm. we invite you into this hot topic of trying to figure out whose favorite language is what. God, the other time you were telling me I should use Java. Can you justify yourself? Why would you uh, use Java? Okay, I was saying JavaScript. So JavaScript, uh, because it's um, a hot language now, mm -hmm. it's the one that is really developing too much, and then you can find too much information about it. And then when you are just a beginner, it's easy also to learn. And then now you can do many things also with JavaScript. Like uh, if I want to program hardware, if I want mobile apps or web apps, I can do all of that with just a single language, JavaScript. Okay. Yeah. Ivan, you look like you have a burning statement. Uh, <laughs> of course, the, the, my favorite is PHP. Uh, it's, I, in my opinion, it's the best uh, web, the best uh, programming language for web. Mm -hmm. To be on web, to run web, mm -hmm. PHP would be the best. There is, I think, a uh, language like JavaScript is kind of underrated. Mm. And right now, the speed at which it's growing is, I think, faster than Python. Because you have Node.js, and mm. you, you, have no, you have to have in JavaScript, but mm. on the back end. Mm. Right, like what you say. Then you have uh, frameworks like React Native, uh, mm. uh, you have uh, Ionic, you have Angular. So you're developing mobile apps with just okay. JavaScript. Mm. Right, so I think uh, JavaScript is kind of underrated, but it's a very good programming language. A Python is great, uh, though I personally wouldn't, if I'm to do a project, I would definitely use PHP uh, without thinking about it. <laughs> but I think Python, Python is okay, I've done some work with Python, it's okay, but if I was to choose a leader, I would choose PHP, not JS, then Python. Maybe <laughs> and then of course, language like Java, I think those are more for enterprise. Uh, I don't know if my <laughs> name <laughs> Yeah, that's it. <laughs> the enterprise. Uh, <laughs> we work we work in a startup because I think um, Java developers are kind of expensive. If personal I was going to build you for a Java for a Java project, mm. I'd I'd build you higher. Mm. If I, maybe it's PHP it would be something. Mm. Like it's, it's is Java. it because you're comfortable? No, it's because of the amount of work. <laughs> <laughs> Java is you have to think of, like what you said, you have to think of all these things. How is it going to, to, to consume the RAM mm. and all that stuff? So, so the hardware I, aspect of it. I think a dot net, that's C sharp and yeah. that and Java, I think those are more enterprise out before. You yeah, wouldn't do it personally. Yeah. Drake, mm. you seem to be quiet. <laughs> What's your take? Well, we've talked about like web apps and mobile apps. Mm. And we talked about the head of things, but we left out hardware. Right. We talked mm. about like things like the um, virtual reality. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think like when you're working with hardware, I think uh, Python is powerful. Mm. Uh, when you're working with Raspberry Pi, yeah. And, mm. Yeah, mm. I think Python is quite powerful than any other language. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like the fact that he actually talked about uh, Python because that was my next statement. Raspberry okay. Pi has taken the world by storm. Yeah. Uh, anyone who's uh, trying to get kids into coding and, and that kind of thing, everyone's talking about Raspberry Pi. Yes, yes. Please, can you tell us or tell our viewers what Raspberry Pi is? A Raspberry what are the Pi. advantages? Yes. yes. Well, the Raspberry Pi basically is a, a mini computer mm -hmm. and um, 
basically everything which is expensive or not really needed is thrown out. Mm -hmm. So you have a CPU limited, not very fast. You have RAM limited, mm -hmm. not very much. You have few USB connection, not USB free. It's USB two yeah. because two is not that fast like free, but you yes. don't need it there so much. And you don't need because it doesn't consume so much electricity mm. by that also you don't need that much power for it so it's just a sm nice small computer basically just you have just basically a plantain and and like that but it comes with everything you need so you can even install one windows 10 now on it you can install linux on it and people build amazing amazing system with it. You can do your hotspot, your mm -hmm. own personal hotspot with it. You can let the balloon fly. It measures the weather, basically. You can do entertainment. That's actually what my first thing I did. I built my own entertainment system mm -hmm. with the Raspberry Pi on that. So it's quite a cool piece of technology. And $35, yes. one, yes. and yes. there you are. Now you try to go and buy a laptop or what, it, it will cost you quite a bunch of money. Yeah. So I brought actually some Raspberry Pis to teach because it, it's just an amazing piece of technology. You've mentioned something, Linux. <laughs> open source. I know open source because my at one point at my workplace, my colleague would brag about, you know, he's the only one who's able to use yeah. Linux and open source. He bragged about it. Can you also shed more light because mm. someone's like, yeah, what's what's open source? Mm, mm. What's, what is it? Well, we have we have closed source and we have open source. So in the easiest way to describe it, someone there at Ginger Road uh, sits in his garage and puts a brand new car no one has ever actually seen, but puts all the pieces together. Mm -hmm. And uh, the tires, he designs them, the engine he designs, and the doors and what. And then makes his manual, how he did this, how big, how small and what. And locks it up somewhere and releases the car on the street. And people love the car, but no one else can build it actually, because only he has the manual, how it's done. It has an accident, no one knew exactly what happened, why. So he gets it back, opens his manual, says, oh, these changes maybe I needed to be done. Fixes it, brings back maybe a new version. That is a closed source way of doing things. Right. Then we have like a company like Tesla, which is just an amazing company, which says, you know what? We build a car, which is, can even drive itself, etc. We love the technology, but we want that others also uh, are able to build something smart and great like this mm -hmm. so they do the manual do the same thing like the guy ginger road etc design and doing so on and so forth but at the end of the day they open their manual they have they don't lock it away say people here you have the manual mm -hmm. look at it find anything which is not okay in it and help me to do a better yeah. one so you find that microsoft which is this is cancer open source is cancer mm -hmm. and sh bad and mm -hmm. what and the linux world ah microsoft you don't know mm -hmm. Today, Microsoft, we love mm. Linux. Mm. Linux operating system like Windows. Yes. And, but Linux, basically, students sat down and say, you know what, what is this? Whenever we want to access the machine on Unix, it costs us money. We're all fighting about it because these are mega machines, very expensive. Mm. Uh, Linux toward and say, you know what, let me sit down and develop something new, working like that, but I can run on a normal machine without having this huge main, main, uh, mainframe mm -hmm. system. So he sat down, he pro programmed basically a kernel, the thing that communicates with the hardware, etc., and released it as open source. Mm -hmm. And many people came in and said like, wow, this is great. And then it grew, it grew, it grew, software was added on, partly some of it was already there. And that is now the operating system, Linux, Ubuntu, Red Hat, what you hear outside there. So even Android on our phones right. is mainly open source. Mm -hmm. The iPhone, what it has inside there, most of it is open source. If you have a smart TV at home, most of it, what the software is running inside yeah. is open source. So we have more open source than we even imagine. So when you write code, it's just a receipt, basically. Mm -hmm. So one says, no one is allowed to look at it. Another one says, hey, I invite you all look at it. Mm -hmm. And we have certain licenses and bring in the advantage and we give back again the better version of it. Great, thank you for clarifying that up. Sure. Uh, we just have maybe three minutes okay. for you to just um, encourage the young people to jump into the ICT okay. field. Yeah, so today what I'm, I, I keep today what I keep seeing is basically uh, people who I asked, can you swim? And they say no, and they can't enjoy 
the the beach, the water there, etc. Now when I'm, I'm abroad, I'm traveling, and I, I have a nice chance to jump into the water, I definitely do and I enjoy. And I think why people don't know how to swim is because they underrated mm. something. And in the ICT, it's the same thing. People underrate mm. the certain things, ability or, or what they go for other things. And when the time comes to jump into the water, like, oh, I don't know. Mm. And they miss our chances. Today, IT is so deep in our life already that you can't think it away. So if you don't want to learn about it, you're basically saying, I don't want to be part of life in some way. Because IT, when your phone rings, it's IT. There's an antenna that has software where the signal comes to your system and you talk and it's a signal again going. We're using it every day. So I really will encourage any age, even if you're a grandma, let me say, you ask me for the youth, but any age, get involved in IT in whatever area it is. It can be working on a digital pool, working on the computer, what? but don't belittle it. It's bigger than that. And it's gonna, it's creating the jobs now. It's the big uh, engine for, for jobs. It's the big engine for, for new opportunities. It's a big engine. I, I, I recently read from Google, they were giving out uh, kind of like chances that you can go and get a, a study sponsored on some, but it's IT. Yeah. So if I've, I've not involved myself, I wouldn't even go on that train. Yeah. So. Uh, don't ignore it, it's a chance to grow to the future, which we can't see today all clearly, but it's a chance to step on it and it drives you actually further. So I will encourage everyone, look into it and know that it is even a game changer in, very other, in many various areas. And so that was Browse. Thank you so much, Michael, You're for welcome, joining Angela. us today. And we would like to thank our participating Please. audience for giving us a, a debate that made us run for our money. Cafero.tv can be found online. Just log into www.cafero.tv. And we look forward to seeing you again. My name is Angie. Don't miss us next time.